Hey everyone, it's Julian. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Welcome to day 29 of me documenting my programming journey. Today is Monday, March 21st at 5.59 a.m. and we're getting started by publishing my first ever app on the App Store. The last few vlogs have been about me building this app. It's just an expense tracker, super simple. I just wanted something that I could use to practice uploading apps to the App Store so I could understand what that process is like. I wanted to also make sure I could release updates for it so I could understand what it's like to release updates for an app, and I'm gonna be doing that in upcoming vlogs. So if you're interested, go down and subscribe. But anyway, let's get into doing that because that's gonna be fun. So that was pretty cool. I love that it's finally out, that I can have something to look at to reference what stuff is gonna look like when it's actually uploaded to the App Store. And I'm gonna put the link to it down in the description in case any of you guys wanna check it out. Totally 100% free, of course. Again, this is really just a way for me to practice and just have something that I can update to practice updating stuff and all that kind of stuff and getting used to the process of actually finishing an app and going through it and, and continuing the, the whole process. So anyway, enough of all that. I'm now going to move on to a couple lessons in the Ultimate Portfolio app course on the Hacking with Swift website. Most of the way through this course now, I am doing another lesson about integrating in-app purchases into the app that we've been working on over the course of the course. <laughs> and so I'm gonna do that lesson now and check in with you guys after. the lesson let's check out what i learned so this lesson was all about actually integrating the back end of our in-app purchase stuff with the front end and adding ui elements that allow the user to make an in-app purchase and if you didn't see the last vlog you won't know that the in-app purchase that we're offering is basically something that allows the user to unlock the full app for 2.99 our app is essentially about giving the user the ability to add projects to their app, sort of like a to-do list, a long-term to-do list. And so, so let's say you wanted to learn something like uh, how to play guitar. You would have learned to play guitar as a project, and then items might be buy a guitar, get guitar lessons, blah, 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 blah. And you can add only up to three items now, or only up to three projects, rather, in the free version of the app. And if you want to be able to add unlimited projects, you have to purchase this and not purchase. And that's basically the way that we're practicing integrating this. So what we have as a result of all the work we did um, in our products view, which is where we show the user what's available to buy, and in our unlock view, which is where we basically control the loading state of the, or basically read the loading state of our store and display different messages depending on what's going on. Uh, we did all that work. And what happens when we go to open projects and add multiple projects, one, two, three, and now if we try to add one more because of this limitation, we're gonna be presented with this sheet that says get unlimited projects. You can add three projects for free or pay $2.99 to add unlimited projects. It's also cool because this $2.99 automatically localizes depending on where you're located and what your currency is. So we can restore our purchases. Let's say if we had another device that we made the purchase on and now we're moving to this device, we wanna be able to restore our purchases. That's what that's for. And then you can also buy this isn't actually going to charge me, it's just for testing purposes, as you can see here. And then pay $2.99, purchase, done. 
crates, you're all set. And then we can add more projects. And what's really cool about this is if we go to our debug menu and go to store kit, manage transactions, we can see that the back end of our code worked properly. This is the screen that's showing us that the transaction happened and the item was successfully purchased, which is really cool. It's, it's really cool to see all of this in action and to see how it's actually integrated. I definitely understand more of it now that I'm actually being able to see how it works in practice, which is great. That was another really long lesson, so I think I'm going to call it here for the day. Also, there's a Q&A lesson next, which really isn't that interesting to talk about. It's sort of like a bunch of questions that Paul, who is the teacher, has received over the course of the course. And every time I say that, I'm gonna laugh. It's just gonna happen. And so I'm gonna check that out, see what's going on there, see if I had any of the questions that other people had, and pick this up again tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye.